A Brooklyn-born teenager named Quentin Coldwater learns that magic and that the world from his favorite fantasy novel, Fillory, and further, actually exists. Rather than enrolling at an ordinary college with his friends, he chooses to study magic at Breakbills University for magical pedagogy. The story begins on a street in Brooklyn. Henry Fogg, dean of the Magic University, enters New York City through a door that opens to a forest beyond this world. As he is sitting on a bench, a lady named Eliza joins him to inform him that it is already happening while laying a huge dead moth on his lap. He claims that they are not even at breakbulls yet but the lady demand he rushes their recruiting. Then, the woman hands Fogg a pocket watch for emergencies. Meanwhile, Quentin Coldwater is awaiting release at the Midtown Mental Health Clinic. He impresses Dr. London with a coin trick by making a coin vanish. After reviewing his admission report, which indicated that he was clinically depressed, Dr. London questioned why he believed that he was ready to leave. Quentin claims to be getting better and reasons his condition to his inability to accept reality. Despite his confident attitude, Dr. London believes he needs more therapy. According to Quentin, they cannot detain him as he has never threatened to harm himself or another person. Shortly after, he leaves the facility. Later at a graduation celebration party at Columbia University, Quentin watches a dance by a girl wearing rainbow-colored shorts. Julia Wicker, who is on the other side of the room with her boyfriend, James, and a group of friends, spots Quentin and invites him to hang out with them. Instead of going to their side, Quentin shows his cup and vanishes into his magic and illusionist-themed room, and starts reading his favorite book, The World in the Walls, the first book in the Fillory and Further series. Shortly after, Julia comes to the door. As she lies next to him, he says he was rereading the books one more round until listing them on eBay. Then Julia wonders about his whereabouts since she had called him on the weekend but didn't get any answer. Quentin explains that he escaped to his father's house in New Jersey because he was worried about his Yale interview with Yale. Julia says she wasn't judging and sweetly kisses him on the cheek. At the same time, James enters and asks why his girlfriend and his friend are in the bed before jumping on them. Soon, other people from the party join them and the bed collapses immediately. Later, Julia and Quentin travel to a residential district the following day for the Yale interview. The two knock on the door but receive no response, so they go inside. Shockingly, they discover the interviewer deceased and dial 911. Before he and Julia left, one of the paramedics, the same lady named Eliza, gives Quentin a box left by the deceased. He opens the box to find a draft for the sixth fillery and further novel, whose existence had only been claimed. Frustrated, Julia comments that Quentin was meant to give up on fillery because it's only for kids. After their disagreement, Julia goes to see James while Quentin continues to read the text for a little more. During his stroll down the street, one of the papers gets caught in the wind. Quentin chases after a newspaper as it leads him to a shady place. At the same time, Julia arrives at a building. She uses the elevator to go to the third floor, but it instead goes down. Then, Julia's elevator opens its doors to an illuminated corridor whereas Quentin still chases the floating page through a dark narrow street. When he breaks away out of the bushes, a shul building appears in the distance. As Quentin navigates his way through to the school's front door, Julia follows a sign pointing her to an exam down the corridor. As Quentin approaches the entrance, Elliot Wah waits for Quentin at the school's stairs. Before guiding him to the test, Elliot informs Quentin that he is running late. Then he explains that they are in upstate New York and that Quentin has been given the opportunity to take the preliminary exam for admission to the graduate program. With a surprised look on his face, Quentin asks Elliot if he was hallucinating. As they enter the classroom, Henry Fogg loses no time to declare the two are late. After everyone has found a seat, Fogg reveals himself as the Dean of Breakbills. He instructs that any inquiries be postponed because, at this time, their primary priority should be finishing the exam. The exam begins with the booklets displaying questions that are always changing but Quentin quickly gets the concept and starts to answer. Then he turns in his booklet after the test. Soon later, he is given a card with instructions about where to go next. When he sees Julia waiting in line, the two hug and briefly talk about how they came before Fogg interrupts them. When Julia visits Professor van der Wegg, he informs her that the purpose of the exam was to demonstrate any potential magical powers she could possess. Then, van der Wegg firmly states that while she might have experienced the magic at one time in her life, that's not valid now. After van der Wegg explains that he is going to remove Julia's memories, she expresses that she can't go back now that she entered the world of breakbulls and magic. As the professor gets ready to erase her memories, Julia cuts her arm with the ring. In a different room, Dean Fogg requests that Quentin do some magic with a deck of cards while he is the school board watches. So, he performs a card trick, which makes some in the audience laugh. When Fogg comes over and asks whether he'd rather go back to the life he hated, Quentin gets frustrated and makes another try at a card trick. Then he even surprises even himself upon realizing he is in charge of the deck of cards as it explodes all around him and swirls in the air. Suddenly, he faints from exhaustion after placing cards in the shape of a castle on a desk nearby. In his dream, Quentin sees a big tree with a clock. When he gets close to it, he runs and counters Jane Chatwin from the Fillory and further novels, who warns him that mastering time magic is difficult. 
She emphasizes the fact that time itself cannot stop the beast from arriving. After being strangely swallowed by a moth cloud at Breakbills, Quentin awakens in a dorm room. He is relieved to see the school logo on the deck of cards on the nightstand next to him and that the adventure wasn't just a dream. At the same time, Julia wakes up in New York City with James at their apartment. She feels perplexed whether it was real or a dream until she finds a scar on her arm. Instantly, she realizes what happened to her was real and starts looking for terms related to breakbills on the internet. Later, Dean Fogg welcomes Quentin to his office at the clock tower and continues to elaborate on the existence of real magic. Then Quentin wonders how they were able to locate him. The Dean further explains that they use enchanted globes for eligible candidates but he adds that Julia didn't make it as she failed to pass the test. After breaking the news of Julia, the Dean asks Quentin about his medication, which makes him uncomfortable. To ease his mind, Dean Fogg assures Quentin that Breakbills is a place to leave all the worrisome things behind. After going back to his room, Quentin comes across Penny, the new roommate he knew earlier from the preliminary exam. When Quentin discovers that his paper is gone, he suspects Penny of stealing it, which he denies. Then, Elliot and Margot Hansen showed up at their door to Quentin a tour of the school. Later on in practical applications, the first-year students attend an introduction to casting spells. Alice Quinn, a different student, is asked to cast a spell at the professor's request. Katie Orloff Diaz makes fun of Alice's performance, but Penny jokingly asserts that she is a skilled magician at work. So, Alice initiates a series of subtle movements before quickly returning to her seat. Following the class, Penny reads Katie's mind when they share a mutual admiration. Then they closely enjoy each other's company in Katie's dorm. After on the same day, Margot, Quentin, and Elliot are seated when Alice passes by. Hanson discusses Alice's edge over everyone due to her magical familial background. Then Hanson sarcastically offers Alice to join their group, but she immediately turns around and leaves instead. After apologizing for his companion's actions and praising Quinn's magical talent, Quentin runs into Alice that evening in the cafe. Consequently, Alice clarifies that despite her image, she has no significant edge attributable to her family. She explains that she learned magic by herself when Quentin asks for help in not getting kicked out of school. A couple of days pass, and James calls Quentin and reveals Julia isn't in the right mind for some period adding that she is doing the bare minimum to survive. James follows up by reminding Quentin about Julia's birthday. After some time, Quentin shows up with his group at the party, but Elliot and Margot soon leave for the bar. At the bar, a guy wishes Julia happy birthday, but she ignores him as her mind is too preoccupied. Then she chats with Quentin outdoors after spotting him, and she shows him the scar on her arm. Quentin thinks the school was correct in their judgment, despite Julia revealing her ability to cast a spell for him to see. So, he advises her to pick another career instead, saying she is capable to accomplish whatever else she puts in mind. Julia leaves her talk with Quentin and enters the bar's bathroom. When her shirt's buttons begin to drop, she is abruptly pulled to other side of the room and bound to the radiator. Julia is perplexed as she sees the man who had wished Julia a happy birthday from the bar, open the door to meet with her. As Julia abruptly frees herself from the radiator and conjures fire jets from her fingers, the man who is crouching next to her asks how it feels to be defenseless against him. He puts out her flames after being impressed. In response, Julia accuses him of assault, however, he claims that was not his plan and that his organization only needed to check if she is a magician. Curious, Julia wants to know what specifically his organization is. Later, Quentin is engaged in a study session in the Breakbull's library. Out of nowhere he unexpectedly hears banging on a door. He opens it and enters Fillory. There, Jane Chatwin reveals that Fillory selects when it wants people to visit, rather than the people choosing to go there, and that it wanted Quentin to be there. She shoves his palm into a sign he sees on a stone. At his desk in the library, he then awakens. When he looks at his palm in shock, he notices it left a mark. He picks up the mark from his memory as it is the sigil he previously saw in Alice's book. Then he finds Alice to ask her about the sign. Before he shows her the emblem in his palm, she dismisses him. After seeing the mark on his palm her expression changes and she wants him to meet her later. According to what she claims the symbol means, contact the other side. She has to perform a conjuring, but before performing, she specifically wants a book that the Dean owns and that was taken off the library shelves years ago. Quentin reluctantly reveals he's afraid to take any risks, fearing getting expelled from school. In return for his contribution, she offers to provide tutoring. But she warns him. Because he's involved in this, he must be present for real. While Katie and Penny attempt to study in Penny's dorm room, Penny becomes too distracted to continue. He stops claiming that he has to investigate the voices he is hearing and Katie follows him. After Quentin and Alice first meet up in the classroom, Alice is reading summoning-related resources when Quentin realizes the sign on his palm has vanished. 
because no one would tell her how he passed away. Alice claims they are attempting to get in touch with her brother Charlie who passed away at Breakbulls five years ago. She adds that she is not at Breakbulls because she likes magic but instead for her brother. The moment Alice says they are missing certain essentials for the ceremony, Penny and Katie enter the room suddenly. When the magic is performed, they turn to the mirror in the room's corner hoping to see something, but nothing appears. They tidy up after that and return in disappointment. After they leave, a suspicious fog appears on the mirror, drawing a creepy smiley face. While all is happening, Julia and Pete go to a shady part of New York. He approaches a closed door, rolls up his sleeve, and opens the door to reveal the star tattoo to the person watching from behind. When the door opens, Julia discovers a brand new route to magic. Later in the Breakbills classroom, Professor van der Wegg gives a lecture on alloys. The clock stops at exactly noon. Dean Fogg rushes into the classroom when he notices his watch doing the same thing outside. Inside, everyone is magically frozen, but they can still observe what is going on. Suddenly, a horror movie emerges from the mirror. A creature with a moth cloud on his head, encircled by moths appears. Then, he slowly circles the classroom, obscurely killing the professor. In the middle of the silent chaos, Dean Fogg enters the classroom to fight him but the man defeats Foggs and gouges his eyes out mercilessly. In the end, he approaches frozen Quentin to say, Quentin Coldwater, there you are.